Yo, people, yo, people. So remember a time when they used to say that Republicans were the war hawks and the warmongers? Well, times have changed now. So let's take a look at what the Democrat governor of Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro, is doing with his time. And while he's wasting his time doing that, this is what's happening in Philadelphia. So you, so you think Josh Shapiro would get to managing that situation, but instead he's signing artillery shells for Vladimir Zelensky. And he's not even doing a good job of it. I mean, you're just supposed to, like, put your signature on there, no? He's writing, like, a whole fucking paragraph on the shell. Like, what the fuck? Like, hurry it up, man. Everybody sat there waiting so that they can do this whole routine where they clap and applaud Josh Shapiro for his amazing gesture to Zelensky and all that, right? And he's there, like, writing a whole paragraph, and everybody just sat there, like, waiting for him. It's so weird. But, you know, you know the important thing about what you saw there is it highlights the stupidity of the Democratic Party in a lot of ways. Because Democrats wonder why it is that so many Republicans have turned on Ukraine, or turned on Zelensky, rather, and have started to back Russia in this Ukraine-Russia war. They wonder why? This is why. This right here is why. It ain't got nothing to do with Russian TV, Russian disinformation, Russian propaganda, right? These people, most of them can't even speak Russian, but they know that they support Vladimir Putin. Why this? This is why they support Vladimir Putin. Because of what you're doing. Signing artillery shells, like, is some kind of amazing thing. Like, you do realize that that shell is probably going to be used to kill a Russian soldier. And the problem with this conflict that we're seeing is that so many Democrats are just blatantly dehumanizing Russian soldiers as if they're just like filth. And it's like, you know, just like a lot of the Ukrainian soldiers in this, frankly, what seems to me to be a proxy war between the West and Russia, the Russian soldiers, a lot of them probably don't want to be there. I don't think a lot of Russian soldiers were itching to fight the Ukrainians particularly, but this is what was demanded of them. And so it's what they're doing because it's their job as members of the military. And obviously I think some have been conscripted as well. And so you do realize that you're going to be killing a Russian in the process of this. And that's not something to be taken lightly. Like, that's not something that you should just be happy. Oh, I'm just signing an artillery shell for Zelensky so that he can kill some more Russians. Like, that's not something you actually want to do. Like, whether or not you choose to fund Ukraine and support Ukraine is a separate matter. But actively signing their artillery shells, praising the death aspect of this conflict, which is what it seems like you're doing here, is absurd and ridiculous. It makes it seem like you really, really want this. It makes it seem like you're enjoying all the dead Russians. And it's just like, look, you, you may not like Vladimir Putin. That's fine. You don't have to like Vladimir Putin. But why exactly do you have such disdain for the Russian soldiers that are dying in a ditch for no apparent reason, the same way the Ukrainians are dying in a ditch for no apparent reason? And I mean, you're inflaming this situation and making it worse. Because if I'm not mistaken, Vladimir Putin came out recently and said that if... American weapons are used in Russia, then he will see that as a declaration of war. And here you have Josh Shapiro signing artillery shells that are going to be used against the Russians. Whether or not they'll be used in Russia, I'm not sure, but they will be used against the Russians for sure. And Josh Shapiro is just signing off on it. And I'm just like, I thought we wanted this war to end people. Like, I thought the pretense that all the authority figures were claiming was that they just want this war to end. It doesn't seem like you want it to end. It seems like you want this war to keep on going. Which brings me to this clip right here that I wanted to play for you that might be relevant to this exact point. Now this conjunction of an immense military establishment and a large arms industry is new in the American experience. The total influence, economic, political, even spiritual, is felt in every city, every state house, every office of the federal government. We recognize the imperative need for this development. 
yet we must not fail to comprehend its grave implications. Our toil, resources, and livelihood are all involved. So is the very structure of our society. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. We should take nothing for granted. Only an alert and knowledgeable citizenry can compel the proper meshing of the huge industrial and military machinery of defense with our peaceful methods and goals so that security and liberty may prosper together. So there you go, there you go. Notice he says peaceful methods and goals. Now, maybe I'm misreading the situation here, but does it sound like the Democratic Party in particular is looking for peaceful solutions here? It seems like almost every step the Democratic Party takes, every time they open their mouth in regards to this conflict, it is an attempt to antagonize Vladimir Putin. I mean, a big one was obviously days before the invasion. Kamala Harris was at the, I think, the Munich Security Conference saying she wanted Ukraine to join NATO, knowing full well, or at least she should have known, that that was a real big no-no for Vladimir Putin. He really didn't like that. And frankly, there's no benefit to it anyways. Right, like... It's not like Ukraine is some kind of global titan. What, what did they need to be in NATO for? What do they need to be in NATO for, aside from antagonizing Vladimir Putin? There is no other logical reason that anyone can see. And yet Kamala Harris pushed for it days before the invasion. Anthony Blinken was pushing for it after the invasion. This year was pushing for Ukraine-NATO membership. Knowing full well this will antagonize Vladimir Putin. Obviously, they put the sanctions on Russia as well. And it's just like... Where where does the de-escalation come in here? Like, at what point do you look at yourself while you're signing an artillery shell that's going to be used to kill a Russian and go, you know, maybe this isn't actually helping with the whole peace between Ukraine and Russia thing. Like, at what point does that cross your mind? It's not like it's not possible here. There were apparently talks of it early on. There's all this rumor going around that there was actually an agreement in place and Boris Johnson came in and scuffled it, the idiot. Apparently, that's, that's what people are saying. I don't know whether or not that's true, but that's what was being alleged. And Donald Trump recently came out and said that, that he was going to negotiate an end to this Russia-Ukraine war. And Vladimir Putin said he was open to hearing it. So it's not as if Vladimir Putin's here hard-headed, refusing to leave. It doesn't appear to be that way. It appears that Vladimir Putin is looking for an out in this war, is willing to find a compromise that will see the end of this conflict. But it just doesn't seem like the Democratic Party is remotely interested and is the reason why what you just heard in the clip? Is it the military industrial complex? Is that perhaps why this is happening? And you know, this is all part of the emerging viewpoint on the right wing, which is that there are shadow figures who really run America. The, the president doesn't really run America. And this is becoming especially exacerbated given the current president, who everybody's forgotten existed, including himself. And that'd be Joe Biden. It's hard to believe that Joe Biden is actually running the American government because it just doesn't seem real. I mean, the man does not look like he's capable of making many decisions at all, frankly. And so the idea that he's actually pulling the strings is very hard to believe. And this is, of course, like I said, this is exacerbating the theory that a lot of people on the right wing have, which frankly could very well be true, that there are shadow figures who run the American government without anyone knowing. And one such shadow figure that is often named is the military industrial complex. And is, is that what's happening here? Are the Democrats intentionally inflaming this conflict, intentionally continuing it on for no apparent reason, just so that they can enrich the military industrial complex? Is that what's happening behind the scenes? That's just my question. And you can't deny that it is at least a logical theory here because there's no other reason why the democrats keep pushing this as hard as they do because they do, they are pushing this let's be real about this you can say this is vladimir putin's fault fault you can side with ukraine if you wish but you cannot deny that the west is antagonizing this so hard all the time it doesn't seem that they have any interest in actually ending this it seems like they just want to keep this going on and on and on and on and they're proud about it they're signing the, the artillery shells. 
This is what the governor of Pennsylvania is wasting his time doing. You can support Ukraine if you want. That's up to you for Josh Shapiro. But why are you proud to sign a weapon that is going to be used to kill a Russian soldier? I don't understand why that's something that would bring you joy or pride in any way. I mean, let's compare this to another conflict, right? Imagine the scenes if Benjamin Netanyahu did the exact same thing. Ima can you imagine the uproar? If he did this, people would claim that Netanyahu is a warmonger and that this is proof of his warmongering, that this is proof that he just wants violence and bloodshed. That's what they would say about Netanyahu. And so you would think that the logical conclusion is that they would say the same thing here about Josh Shapiro, because that's what it seems like is happening here. It seems like he is cheerleading dead Russian soldiers. And Russians are people too, you know. They don't matter less because they happen to be Russian citizens. That's insane. But that's how these people are treating them. Like they're just some filth. They're cockroaches to be stomped on. And it's just, it's revolting, isn't it? I mean, you have to look at this conflict at least through a respectful lens and say, look, you know, you may not side with the Russians, but that doesn't mean you want Russian soldiers to die. It's a part of the war, unfortunately. But that doesn't mean you should want it or cheerlead it. That's certainly not what it means. That is taking it way too far. And it's a part of a growing pattern. Democrats are repeatedly and constantly antagonizing Vladimir Putin. That's what they are doing. I mean, to do this in the wake of Vladimir Putin coming out and saying that a American weapon being used on Russia in Russia would be considered a declaration of war. To do this, like, days after he said this is not what I would call de-escalating things, is it? Quite the opposite. But Democrats just keep on keeping on. They just keep on escalating. I think some Republicans are like this too, but at least there's an element of the Republican Party that rejects this garbage. The Democratic Party seems to be wholesale in on this, on just pissing off Vladimir Putin as much as they can. And it's like, this isn't the aim, people. You, like, you seem to have missed the point. The aim here for the United States is not to piss off Vladimir Putin and prolong this conflict. At least not in theory. It's supposed to be to end this conflict as quickly as possible. To find a solution. Not to enrich the military industrial complex. Not to piss off Vladimir Putin because you don't like him and you think he rigged the 2016 election or some such rubbish. The aim is to end the conflict. And it's time somebody reminded the Democratic Party of this. Like I said in the intro, the Republican Party used to be the party of warmongers. That's what they always used to say. And now it seems to be it's flipped the other way around. Wars and conflicts seem to break out quite regularly when Democrats are in power, right? Especially Joe Biden, we've seen it. Israel, Iran, Israel, Palestine, Ukraine, Russia, it's looking like China, Taiwan's on the brink. But it's breaking out everywhere. But as we all know, when Donald Trump was president, this wasn't really happening. And you could chalk that down to Democrat incompetence, which may well be true. But you could also chalk it down to the military industrial complex and the desire of the Democratic Party to continue to support them by prolonging this war. But let me know what you lot think about this down below. Do you agree or disagree with anything I said? Am I wrong here? Let me know. And uh, yeah, please remember to like and subscribe, people, and see you.